that camera's now not <laughs> level. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna annoy me. Oh, wow. oh dear. For the next like two hours. Yeah. Okay. May as well do it at the start. Yeah. Oh, I'm not, and see, I sort of also wanted to do this because I've never done anything like this in sort of an official capacity. Yeah, nice. I'd like to do this regularly. This yeah. would be cool. Um, and in the email, I was like, I was a bit funny. I was like, oh, you can learn from the best in the business. But I was like, it's free knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you want to be in your garage, like, getting knowledge, like, this is the place to get it, right? Should it be? Oh. Here, in, here in my, my, my red onion. Um, TED Talk, yeah. All right, let's message the Discord. Hello to our and zero viewers. <laughs> and I'll start red onion incorrectly. <laughs> oh, the, the best in this business. Yes, premium. Premium stream artists. Is that a random citizen that's joined? Yeah, someone is watching, which is wow. nice. Cool. Just saying, uh, yeah. I'm just setting up. In. Yeah, I'm just... It's not anything extra, is there, that I'm sort of missing? I don't think so. I think this is all the, the stuff that we need. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, we can talk about it. That's all right. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Just start um, start playing copyrighted music and see how long it takes yeah. for YouTube to take us down. What do you reckon? I'm sure every all would love that. It's a really interesting stream. Never go with you. Yeah, no, I think that's it. I just keep thinking I'm forgetting something. Yeah. That one view is probably my. Oh, okay. So I shouldn't be talking to them. Um, oh, no, no, you can, like, I, whenever I've streamed, it's always been to, like, five people uh, or yeah. two people when I used to do, like, like the game streaming. Oh, uh, yeah, right. And I would I'd always assume that someone's there, yeah. even if I know it's literally just me watching, um, because you never know when that random raid with 200 viewers is going to pop in. Yeah, and, exactly, yeah. You know, get your channel up there and whatnot. Yes. Um, or oh, we've had one like already, so someone's doing something. Hello. Yes. Um, up oh, to concurrent viewers. Yeah, cool. All right, we'll start we'll start talking about stream stuff then, I guess. Yeah. All right. Um, what is sort of the best place to start? I guess talk about what each yeah bit is. Um, this is a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, we're just going to start here, I guess. Try and make it sound semi-professional um, because this is supposed to be my job as a professional streamer. So um, what we've got here on the table is basically everything that you would need for a basic one camera live stream so obviously we've got your camera here which does go as part of a, a bigger kit so when i talk about the camera i'm talking about camera and tripod and everything else that goes with it um, we've also next got a laptop um, now we will provide these for you if needed but most people have got a laptop and as long as they're perfectly fine for streaming we do let you guys use your own as well uh, that's just something that we sort of figure out with you um, you can't use, you know, the cheapest $200 laptop, unfortunately. Uh, I wish we could. We'd have a lot more laptops if that were the case. Got a, a little Ubuntu thing. Um, it runs on Linux. That's I've, so bad. I've, I've definitely, con yeah, I've definitely <laughs> considered them. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll give you a laptop that works perfectly fine. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Sorry, not your phone. Um, we've got a, a power board here. Normally it would be a six board, um, or I'd give you, you know, two four boards or a six board and a four board because you just, you never know when you're going to need two or a spare or whatever. Um, one extend power extension lead. This is one of probably multiple that you might want to carry. We'll give you one. Um, you might find that at a particular ground we might need to give you a second one or if you've got one at home that you might want to take with you. It can never hurt to have more extension leads. I had to use five at one game. That was fun. I've I've definitely had eight or nine on one stream. So it's it's not outside the uh, the realm of possibility, right? Yeah, no. um, and often in that situation, we already know that that's going to be the case, or the club or whoever is going to provide what's if you know if they're playing nice, of course. Um, so yeah, 
Next is, now I've got a short HDMI cable here, so roughly um, a metre for your short, short cable. And then long HDMI cable, so generally anywhere from 5 to 20 metres. Um, you shouldn't usually need more than 5 metres, and if you do, there'll be a really like, specific reason, depending on what ground you're at or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, next is, I've got our 4G Telstra dongle. Um, so this one here just runs on a battery, but it does come with a USB cable, and I probably should be showing that on camera. Yeah. Yeah, so I can find it. It's just a USB. Yeah, just a random. Yeah. yeah. So normally that would come with a USB cable as well to charge it. Um, it does have a battery that will last more than long enough to actually power the thing. Um, so generally I charge that the night before, but I usually leave it plugged in as well on game day because you just never know when it's going to run out of battery. To go with the 4G dongle is a 4G antenna. Now there's a couple of parts to this here. So the first is this long sticky thing that um, can be really easy, like, easy to lose. We have lost a couple of these. Um, there's then this really big magnetic base that comes with a rather long cable that's a good you know, three, five metres or whatnot. And on the end of it is also this extra extension piece. Now, this extension piece does stay connected at all times, but it is technically a separate piece that does, you know, screw on and screw off. And it's just an adapter to plug into the, uh, the 4G dongle there. And now I have ruined my very tidy cable wrapping. Yes. Did you learn that at university? Yes, that's, that's what I paid my, 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 my seventy thousand dollar hex. You know what? They actually had us. Um, they had a competition where they gave everyone twenty five meter XLR cables, oh, and yeah. it was a race to see who could roll them the fastest. Jeez. Who do you think won? Did you win? I, I won. Oh, yep. nice. There was another person that could do it faster, but the idea was that to properly roll a cable, you should be able to just hold onto one end and throw it, and it just comes out. And his, you couldn't do it. It was, a, it was an absolute mess. Mine, on the other hand, perfect. <laughs> it's really good. Well, I've got one person viewing at least, which is, which is nice. Yeah. I expect to go back over some of this stuff anyway later on if we get, you know... If you get people commenting and stuff. Like yeah, well, in 30 minutes, there might be 30 people watching that have no idea what the start of it yeah, was. Yeah, all good. Um, so we're just going to re-roll that. So, yeah, that's your antenna there. Um, and so I'm just going to show you really quickly... The long sticky bit just screws into the base. Is the long sticky bit a stick? It's not a stick, no. It's actually metal and you really shouldn't bend it because it okay. might break it. Yeah. Um, magnet in the base, so you can stick it to basically anything. Of course, this is a wood table, so I can't really demonstrate. Um, but I normally stick this up on a, a roof or a wall or a pole or something like that just to get extra height on it. And then there's just two little, we'll show this later on, um, two little connectors on the, the 4G dongle for that one there. Oh, you could like switch the cameras. Oh yeah, actually, you know what? Let's do that. Ta-da! You know what I should have done? Show and hide transition as well. There we go. So now we've got our overhead. So you can see here is your 4G dongle. On one side are a couple of buttons, and that's where you put your SIM card in. And then on the top side, there's a USB cable uh, connection here on the middle. And then on the end, one side here. You know, I'll just come closer. That's all good. Well. Yeah, nice. We yeah, are camera people. No. We should know what we're doing, shouldn't we? Yeah. So you can see there, USB cable, and then just two little clips that you can undo. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these the uh, the 4G dongle plugs in, but what I'll do is just pull it over here. And you can see there, just plug straight in, and it just sits in there. Like, it's, it's not a very, um, it's not the tightest fit in the world, but it will sit in there perfectly fine. You might want to tape it down, which is, again, another thing that we do provide in the kit. All right, thanks, Pete. I'll hide that one. Even, I don't know if you wanted to, there's a way that you can, like that, oh, yeah, so that you can see it. Yeah, that, there we go. <laughs> and then the last piece of the puzzle is our uh, capture card here. So this one here in question, this is what we normally use. This is an Elgato HD60S. Um, I've got probably five or six of them on a shelf there. 
So I'll show you how to use this one specifically. There are other ones that we do use from time to time, um, but generally you'll get training on those specific methods if, if necessary. So we'll open the Elgato up. And so the Elgato has three things inside the box, and I do ask that all three things stay in the box together because it's just messy and nothing ever stays the same and clean and nice. So three things in the box here. So we've got our actual capture card here with the HD60S on it. Um, and there's a HDMI and a USB port on one side. And then there's a HDMI port on the other side. There is also a USB 3 Type-C to Type-A cable. This specific cable has to stay with the capture card and cannot be used with any other cable. If you ask me, why is my capture card not working and you're not using this cable, that is why. Like, that's, there's no two ways about that. I don't think I've ever had these work with another cable. No, nah, it's frustrating. Um, so even if you have to label this specific cable for Elgato, which we probably should do anyway, yeah, um, keep it together. It also comes with a short HDMI cable. This isn't as necessary to keep with the kit because we do give you a spare one, um, but it does need to obviously be a short one that fits in the box there. All right, so we've gone over all the little bits and pieces. We've also got um, a roll of tape. Um, always, if, if you run out of tape, go buy more, ask us for more. Um, I pay, I go to Bunnings and get just the black uh, gaffer tape. So I usually, yeah, I usually go to Bunnings for my gaffer tape. I pay, what, eight bucks, 10 bucks for a roll or something, something like, something like that. that. It's not cheap, but it is the best tape you'll ever use. Um, I, I swear by it, and it's pretty much gold standard for, for media in general. I'm getting cold again. God. Oh, there he is. I'm looking for the ultimate resi. He was, yes, he was. He was doing nothing the entire game, and then That's last right. quarter he decided, "I'm going to kick three goals and just play in the mud." Um, he's nice. a big wolf as well. Yeah, nice. <laughs> All right, we have a drink here. All right, so I think probably the first place to start would be um, going to clear everything. And we're going to get the laptop out and just go through each single piece and where they sort of fit into the uh, the workflow here. So let's. I'm just going to start handing things to you. Maybe even if they just go there, actually, it's probably a good spot because then I can grab them again when I need them. Yep. So we'll start one by one. It's all right. Let's put it there. Like that. That there and that there. Perfect. Alright, start just that for now. So I'm just going to plug this power board into power I've already got uh, prepared, ready to go. Now, when you're filming football, there's obviously a very specific way that you go about choosing your filming location. When it comes to streaming, um, you pretty much want to set up in the best spot for the stream specifically. So the one thing you've got to look for is power. Um, you have to have power for a live stream. There's no two ways about it. Laptop needs power, and I always have my camera plugged into power as well. Even if you think it's going to last, you just you never know, right? Um, and because with a live stream, you're leaving the camera on at your breaks. Excuse me. You might find that the camera has to stay on for three and a half, four hours. Um, and with this camera, it might be fine, but you just never know, right? You better to be safe than sorry in these situations. Okay. So, at the cricket, we we got a generator. To, to oh really? Because we're in the middle of nowhere. No power anywhere, so well that's that's how we ended up with nine extension leads was cricket. Oh. No power. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do so plug that in. I'm gonna switch cameras for a sec. So I think that's probably a better view for this yeah, yeah. this setup here. Yeah. So put our laptop plugged in. Cool, that's good to go. I'm gonna put my camera there and the camera's turned on just so I know that I can, I can get an output on uh, the rest of my devices there. So what, I'm, you know what I might do is get one of those short HDMIs now and try and pipe this laptop feed in now so I know it's ready to go. Yeah, makes sense. Now 
Now the laptops that you do get provided will come with Windows and it'll have OBS installed and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you can see that there. So now theoretically, all I have to do is go number. Yep, done. So we're overhead and laptop. Cool. Alright, so we're going back to our overhead here. So we've got the laptop ready to go. Now, my first step is always the capture card because obviously it's, you know, that's where the camera is going to be plugged into. Um, would you set your camera up first? Um, yeah, I'd, yeah, I generally, I'd look for my, my filming slash streaming location and then set the camera up so you know you're ready to go because obviously if... Yes, we're there to stream, but the f number one thing we're there to do is to film the game. So if the stream goes down, or you know you can't get it working, you want to make sure you've still got a a camera ready to go. Yeah. Um, so that I always do my camera first. But once you get uh, you know you get into your routine and you know where all the different bits go, you can get a stream set up in what 10, 15 minutes usually. Yeah, I've not it, not including. Um, I've I've definitely rocked up to one like 15 minutes beforehand, and yes, it was tight. But I got there, so... Oh, yeah, Newtown Chilwell game. Care of whatever in there when I... Yeah. Rough, um, rough. Yeah, half time. Um, and I guess that's one of those things to point out with streaming is that it can be stressful at times, but it, it's one of those things that's really process-driven. There's, there's lots of different steps that you can go through along the way, and as long as you're following those steps fairly closely or you're aware of what, what can go wrong where, you'll be fine. Um, and that's sort of why we're here, I guess, is to talk about... What you know, what what can go wrong, and and what you do to to, to solve issues. So, the next one here will be capture cards. So, we've got our USB cable that specifically goes with the Elgato. So, what I've got here, there we go. So you see, there is a HDMI. That is a HDMI in. Uh, can you guys see that? If I get it really close, you might be able to. It says in on that side, and you notice it's a USB-C. So that's the side that our USB cable um, plugs into there. So plug that in there. And then on your laptop, you want to plug it into a port. So there's a few different ways that you can describe this, right? It, it might be blue. It might say SS next to it. Um, it might say 3.0. It, well. it might say USB 3.0. It might say USB 3.1 Gen 1. It might also say USB 3.2 Gen 1, oh. depending on which laptop you get. Or it might also say USB 4. So as long as it, I know, right? As long as it says one of those things, you're good to go. If it doesn't have SS or Super Speed next to it, no good. So um, I kind of want to show. The SS at some point. Okay, it's just, it's just really. It's not, it's not hard to. Nah, that's yeah. that's fine. That's fine. Now nah, you know what? Yeah. Do you, shall we zoom in on it? Yeah. Sure. We have, so we have the technology. We'll just show you really quickly there. You can actually see. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to. It's not going to focus, is it? Go back slightly. Let me go. No. Nah. I don't like it. Yeah, zoom out a bit. Yeah, yeah you just go further. <laughs> there we go. So you can see there, it's got the, the regular little... That's gone again. Uh, yeah. yeah, go back. That. Yeah, there. So you can see there, it's got the little SS next to it. That's how you know you're working with a um, working with a, a USB 3 port there. They're not necessarily going to be blue. I have seen ones like this that are just black. I've also seen red, which is just really great. That's what you want. So now we've seen that. Thanks, Pete. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do, put this back up here. So I'm gonna plug this in. Now take, take note, 
when I do plug it in. So you'll notice that it flashed twice. Two white flashes means you're good to go. One white flash means you are not good to go. Any red, no good. So some, some issues that might cause that is um, just a bad USB connection. So you might have to re-plug either end of the cable back into the computer. You might have to try a different port. So I found that even just going to a different USB 3 port can fix it. Um, so those are sort of the main steps you can take. You can also just restart the laptop. I find that 99% of the issues I run into on a stream are solved by restarting the laptop. I wish that weren't the case, but it is absolutely the case. So it's all the power cycle, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> if you're having a, an issue with something, turn it off and on again, um, because that seems to solve 99% of all the, uh, the, the the little tech gremlins. That, we're not that, joking. Yeah, yeah. No, we're we're, we're actually not joking. Um, <laughs> Like technically, I'm I'm the official tech support internally yeah. for the company, and my first um, step for literally everything is turn it off and on again. No matter how stupid you think it is, it is <laughs> yeah the number one way to um, to fix things. So now that we've got our USB cable, we can then plug our HDMI in. Now with a short cable, it won't matter which end you plug in, but some of our longer cables are actually directional, so you might have to take a look. Uh, generally, there's a label on one end of it, um, and we can show you one of those later on. Yeah, and um, sometimes it gives a lower frame rate as well. So, yeah, you might need to switch ends or, like, put it in a certain direction. You just to have a play around. Exactly, that, and that's that's the case with a lot of these things. You'll, you'll learn how to solve the issues, but it's just a, a matter of playing with it. And, yeah. you know, there's so many different situations you can come across. So on our Sony cameras here... So the same panel on the right-hand side that has a USB port also has a HDMI port there. So we can just plug that straight in. Make sure it's in there nice and good. I usually tape it in there, but it isn't definitely not a necessity to do so. All right, so that's step number one. That's probably the easiest um, part of the, uh, the whole thing, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll go over uh, a couple of more pieces. So we'll do the dongle next. So this one's pretty simple. Now, with the dongle, it's got Wi-Fi, but you can also connect it to the laptop via USB. Now, I find that when you use, you, I find that when you use USB, that any jostling of the cable will cause a disconnection. I've had a stream drop out multiple times in 30 seconds because a USB cable was slightly wiggled. Yeah, okay. So what I like to do is I charge this externally with a little USB power brick. Uh, and then just to use the Wi-Fi for this because it ends up being a, a more stable connection. Yeah, there's that's safe, there's right? no chance for dropouts, and it also means that if you, if necessary, you could hot, you know, pl um, connect your phone up to it if you were doing, say, scoring or something on your phone. Oh, yeah, or that replay thing you're talking about. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm not going to show the USB cable here, um, but basically it's just for charging. You don't need to plug it into the camera at all. So I'm going to turn it on which is just the button on the bottom here on the right hand side. Ooh. Now these are given to you with a, a SIM card ready to go. You don't have to recharge them at all. Um, they will say they've only got five gig of data. That's not the case at all. It's actually essentially unlimited. So unless it's actually not working, um, as long as it's turning on and it's giving you internet and you've got no concerns at all basically. Um, so that, that will take a minute to turn on. I'm just throwing things around here. The good thing about our antenna here is that because the cable's so long, you can sort of set this up wherever you want, a few metres away or whatever. Um, so I'll usually have this way off to the side somewhere so that it doesn't get in my way. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Uh, when I do my streams, it's like there's like a roof that the commentators peek out of, or like a thing that like opens flips up, up. Yep. flips up, and then I just chuck it on top of that. And just sticks on there because it's yeah. magnetic. Yeah, exactly. Um, as stated before, we have got just the two ports on the top there, so I'm just going to plug our antenna into one of those. Doesn't again, doesn't matter which one. And this is about to go flat, so I actually do need to plug. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having a good run today. No, I know. Um, and then I gave both of my USB bricks the Brock. So I've got to find another one. Yeah. There is another. I'm going to get some juice. And you know what? That's the wrong. 
long USB cable as well. Oh, as you can see, we're really prepared. Uh, yeah. So all of this sort of stuff that I'm doing now, finding cables, is what I'd be doing on a Friday afternoon uh, before before my stream. Yeah. I make sure I've got everything everything set up, and I'd actually pull all the gear out normally um, and set it down, set it up, you know, camera connected, um, and we've actually got a private Facebook group where you can test your streams as well. True. Yeah, we'll send you a link if you have yeah. stream. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I've got my uh, USB power brick up the back here, plugged in for my dongle, because that was going flat. Yeah, to switch to Barry's Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's not Barry's. No, it's not Barry's Wi-Fi. Um, so we've got our dongle there, and then the other part of the dongle is the little sticky thing. And the little sticky thing just twists into place in the base there. And you want to make sure you've actually got that sort of reefed on there pretty good. Same with the, uh, the extra adapter. All right. I'm just going to... Open that up there. Ooh, OBS is already good to go. That's it. That's a basic live stream setup. Yeah. Um, they actually look a lot more complicated than what they really are. Realistically, for a regular live stream with no commentary, this is your main basic setup in terms of hardware. You've got to have a place to get the camera to go into your computer, you've got to have some way to get internet to your computer, and that's it basically in terms of hardware. Um, so, do we even have, there's no chat, no one's chatting. Is there any questions? Because um, I sort of don't want to continue on if anyone's got anything to ask about this stuff before I go to software. Um, I think we're right. I don't even know how to check the chat in here. There's no option for it. Oh, really? That's rude. Yeah, well, you, like, it's just not... Because this is analytics, and then there's stream health and stream settings, but there's no, like, chat option. Um, did you send all the link to me? Yeah, you got it. You got uh, email. I emailed it to you. Yeah, cool. Hold on. I will check it. I am a. I am a great streamer. All right. Cool. Um, I think we're right for now. Ah, uh, yeah. You've done. You've done. You've done. A, you've done a thing. What have I done? You've made it. Is it private? Uh, made for kids which is not what we want oh so you can't nobody, chat nobody can you no. oh. <laughs> oh all right we're gonna swap cameras so you can see my disappointment <laughs> <laughs> youtube so there's obviously always lots of little things that can go wrong on a live stream things like can you chat in, a, in the youtube comments and not things that you usually have to worry about i couldn't tell you the last time i streamed to youtube so um, Carl does this every week, don't worry. He always sets it to this. Oh, really? People. I don't know if he does it intentionally or not. Oh, okay. So, yeah. if you've got a question, um, email me. You did get an email. Um, so, I guess we'll do, be doing email answering, which makes us sound like a podcast from 2012 or something. Do you want to send it to, via mail as well? Or at um, yeah, so free uh, mail? <laughs> via the snail? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we've gone over the hardware. That all sort of makes sense, um, simple enough. Can, uh, you, can you change that midstream, the, the Made for Kids thing? I oh. don't think so. Let me yeah. have a look. No. Nah. Oh, the only thing I can edit is like... Oh, wait. Made for, nah. made for Kids. Dang. Dang. All right, we're going to be talking about Sesame Street on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not not safe for kids, right? Like it's yeah, but the, the YouTube classification of it is. All right, so now our second input is disappeared. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's using the wrong one. Cool. So now you guys can see um, OBS.
was just using the wrong input. All right, so we're going to delete everything. And so you can see that uh, basically what you're looking at here is more or less um, what OBS looks like when nothing's been added. What I'm going to do is actually do a picture in picture. Oh, I can't. I've set it up the wrong way. <laughs> so I want that and this. And I'd have to swap the two around. Yeah. This, this camera's on the added mini. Hi, guys. No, we won't do that. That's fine. That's fine. You don't need to see my face for this. All right, so... Uh, here's what OBS looks like um, when we just give it to you, ready to go. What have I done? Oh, I don't know what I've done. Anyway, cool. Um, so normally, um, on just a regular old stream, I'd actually create all the graphics for you and have them set up ready to go so you can import them. But I'm actually just going to go through the process here with you manually because um, it is really good to obviously know sort of the different steps that you need to take here. Um, hardware, uh, software is definitely the harder part of this whole process. It's where you will have more issues. Um, that's one of those things where you sort of don't know what issues you have till you have them. Um, there's so many little bits and pieces that, that can go wrong. Um, so the first step will be just to input our capture cards. So uh, I'm not going to go too deep into what is OBS and explain every single little you know, piece of the software. There's plenty of YouTube videos on, how, on that. Uh, that's how I learned how to use OBS. It's really um, easy. It, it is. It's very easy. I'm, I'm just sort of going over OBS um, for our specific uses so you guys just understand the basics to, to sort of get you going. Um, so we're going to be looking at our sources window here. This is where we're actually going to be inputting the things that we're working with uh, for our live stream. So we'll click the plus. Now there's a bunch of different options here, but the one that we're mostly interested in is video capture device. And so that what, what that'll do is bring up a window where we can actually give it a, a nice name. So I'm going to call it Elgato. Uh, but you could call it camera or capture card or whatever you wanted really. Awesome. It selected the webcam right as I was taking a drink. That's oh, what I yeah. want. So you can see here it's um, it's just defaulted to our webcam. So if I click this drop down menu, there'll be a few different options here, but the one that we're looking for is Game Capture HD 60S. Um, now there are a couple of different versions of the Game Capture, so it might be Game Capture HD 60, 60S, or 60S Plus. I believe we've got one of each at least. Okay. Um, but they are, they are all essentially the same thing. Um, now, once you've selected HD60, you should be able just to see your camera here when I move that around. Yeah, you can see I move the camera around, and OBS is obviously uh, picking that up. So that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that as a, as a connection. So we'll click OK. And we're getting our input there. Um, so next, now you can see here I'm already connected to our local internet. So what I'm going to do is quick, quickly connect to the Wi-Fi uh, dongle so that we can get internet, assuming that we're in the middle of nowhere and there isn't actually any Wi-Fi available for us. So you can see it's actually already just connected there. We don't even have to enter the password. The password is just on... Um, the password, the, the Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password are just on the screen here. When you turn them on, you don't have to look on the... It is on the bottom as well, uh, but to get the best idea, I just go to the screen so you can make sure it's you know, current and whatnot. Um, so we've got our camera input next. Then what we can do... Um, you know what I haven't done? Checked if there's graphics on this computer. True, yeah. So I'm going to swap... Right, we're going to swap cameras back to this one, and I'm just going to quickly check that we have... There should be some graphics, but we'll just make sure. Oh, yeah, this is the one you use for uh, GB. Nice. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. Show some ones. Switch back. All right, cool. So we're in OBS, so we've got our camera input. So what we can do next is click the plus in our sources window, and we're going to select image. 
So I'm going to call this one here scoreboard. So as part of the streaming process, you'll get emailed a folder of files and that'll contain a couple of things. So there'll be uh, generally a scoreboard, there'll be a holding screen. So you can see here there's a scoreboard and there's our holding screen and there's also a folder for red scores which is our scoring application. We will go over red scores in a little bit but I sort of just want to focus on the graphics first. So we're going to import the scoreboard. You can see here that's popped up and it's only showing images on a small amount of it because most of it's transparent which is exactly what we want. So we can hit OK and you can see there that it's brought up our scoreboard ready to go um, just obviously with no numbers or anything on it. We'll go to our sources window again and hit image. Next, what we're going to do is type in holding screen or any, you know, however you guys want to want to name it. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same. And that's going to be this graphic here, which is a full screen holding image. So before the game and your quarter time breaks, this is what you'll be showing on the screen. Um, and to hide them and show them, it's as simple as just clicking the eye. So realistically, during a stream, uh, the only one that you'll sort of want to be playing with is the holding screen to show and hide it. Uh, you may also have ads that you have to play, so whether that's a photo ad or a video ad. Do you want to just show the video ad? I yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So we'll, we'll import a video ad here, um, so, which is under media source. Yep. Um, and if you do have a video ad, it would be discussed with you what it is and when to play it, and we would give you the file, obviously. So we'll browse to, so you can see here, here's three different um, sponsor videos that we were given. So we're just going to select one of them there and hit OK. Uh, now this one here was, uh, you know, I'm not going to show that one because it's in a really bad yeah. aspect ratio. Yeah, because somebody made it like that on their widescreen. <laughs> not naming names. Um. Well, it, was, it wasn't me. It might have been. Oh, no, I, no, I didn't make these. Oh, okay. No, these are um, <laughs> these are from the league. Oh, they're all like that. Ex yeah, excellent. No okay, never mind. Well, normally it would be um, in I a. I just thought it zoomed in a little bit more. It would be in a nineteen twenty by ten eighty square. Yeah. So yeah, you know what? I will do that. Yeah, we're going to make it so that it actually fills our screen. Like that, maybe would help. Yeah. I reckon it almost looks better like that. I had a different um, scene. This, yeah, I believe, okay. so I just had the black bars. Yeah. Um, so I, you know what, Pete's actually got a good point there. Let's put it in a different scene. So what we're, we're going to do is go to our scenes window here, and we're just going to create a nah, an, an ad scene. And so basically, these uh, scenes are essentially just groups of sources. So you can create different sort of uh, groups of sources to uh, sort of present what you're working on in a, in a different way. For us, it's not super necessary. Um, obviously, only certain situations where you might want to use it. So we've done okay. I, I tend to do it a lot because um, I always have the audio in. So like when Kara play an ad, I um, You'll I change, change over. the source so that it doesn't have their audio on it as well. And then when I get back to the main scene, it's got their audio again already yep. set up. Yeah. Yep. So Pete, Pete makes a good point there in that there are certain situations where you would need a scene. Um, and as you get better with streaming, you might find on your own that you'll develop that sense for when you do and don't need those sorts of things and how to work around those. If you've ever got any questions, you obviously let us know, but there is a certain degree of... Um, you know, put it together. How, you, how what works for you, sort of, exactly. sort of, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so we can see there now that we've put it into a different scene. Um, this video actually looks a lot nicer with just the black bars there. Um, and to play that during our break, so all we have to do is change scenes and then just hit the replay button there, and we're all good to go. So what we're going to do is flick back over uh, to our camera, and we're going to import a couple more things. So next, what we're going to be importing is text. So we'll click on text, and I'm going to call this one, uh, we'll call this one timer. So I'll do timer, read from file, browse. So this is where we're going to enter our red scores folder here. So you go red scores, data, 
football and then you'll see that there's a few different text files here that might be applicable. The one we're looking for is counter. So you can double click on that and you can see here's our timer. It's popped up here. And so what you'll want to do is resize this down so that it fits into our space. And what I like to do is actually make this smaller so you can work with it a bit better. You can also press Control E and that brings up our transform menu. And so from there you can actually manually adjust it pixel by pixel so you can get it right in the right spot. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this stuff here with the graphics, I actually set up for you anyway. So in terms of the actual placing and the formatting colors, all that stuff, um, yeah, in, in terms of all those things to do with the graphics, I set that up for you. Um, and then all you have to do is import it in. I'm only showing you so that if it so happens that um, you know, those files don't work or you're in a bit of a pickle where you do have to set up from scratch that you, uh, you, you do understand sort of the different steps in the process. So I'll switch back to the camera there. So we've got our timer in our right spot. So we're going to go through and add more text and that's going to be our quarter. So the text that uh, designates what current quarter we're in. We're in and we're going to again tick I forgot to mention that for the last one, but we want to tick the read from file button yes. and then browse. And so the next is current quarter. You can see that there is good. So we'll resize that and drag it down. Now, I'm not going to put it perfectly in place because um, yeah. it can take ages to get it just right. Um, and that's one of those situations where having that Friday afternoon to set up beforehand helps like a lot. When you, when you use control E, you, you can have the specific numbers of what size it is. So if you, you get position and size. So um, if you, now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, if you switch to timer. Yeah. You can see that. Um, They're slightly different sizes. Yeah. So you can actually, yeah, compare and make sure that every element's exactly the same. Yeah, same sort of. Um, and it's hard because you can see they've got four decimal places there. You might find that something's off and it's off by half a pixel. Yeah, they or usually something. just like round up both of them or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah just rounds it off. So and it's the opposite of Photoshop where if you hold control, it doesn't snap into things. Like most of the time, it snaps into place. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. If you yeah, hold control, it doesn't, doesn't do it. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> And again, most of that won't be necessary because I'll be going through yeah, and true. setting up. And even if it's so, for example, Pete, for example, Pete here doesn't, um, I, I don't set up the graphics for him. He does his own. Um, but because he does the same stream every single week, he doesn't have to change the graphics except for the, like the one or two images that he's got. Yeah, it's, it's the same, it's the same, um, it's the same template every week. You're just changing the one image for the game and everything else stays the same. So realistically, you could leave this OBS template how it is um, and just change the image every week. But I do go through and put it, put it all together for you so there's just no, no second guessing or anything like that. So now what we're going to do is add in the home score and you want to make sure that you do get these correct or you'll get very confused and end up with the wrong scores. So we've done our home score first. So we'll select that and put that into place. Again, we're not doing it perfectly. Uh, so like you can use your arrow keys to go pixel by pixel as well. Um, so go, we've done home score, away score, and again, remembering to tick the read from file option, browse, we want score away. Again, we will just put that in its place. And so now, essentially, we have OBS set up for live streaming football, more or less. Um, in terms of your actual, uh, in terms of like visual layout and stuff, this is what we're, we're aiming for. Um, is, is there anything else that you'd add at this point before well, moving on to stream keys and stuff? You need red scores to... Yes. Oh, so, I'll, yeah, I'll do that now. So, once you've gotten to this point, 
Um, next, what you'll want to do is, uh, again, open up the folder that we had before, so this one here. Um, and you can see, it doesn't really help if I point at the screen because I can't <laughs> see it. You can see here is uh, a file called GVL scene collection for OBS. That's actually the template file that uh, I send out, and I will show you how to use that in a bit as well. So we open up Red Scores, and then what you want to do is open up the football folder, and then double click on this application here. Now, when you do open this application up, normally it comes up with a warning that uh, tells you that it's uh, a virus or something. It only says that because I wrote it myself and it's not signed. So there's an option when that menu pops up on Windows uh, that says more info and then that will allow you to run the program. It's, not, it's obviously not actually doing anything, it's just Windows um, being a bit pedantic about, about the software that it's installing. So you can see here that uh, this is red scores and we can resize the window a little bit, make it a bit smaller. Sometimes you might find that the names here are incorrect. So to fix that, all we have to do is close red scores, go into data and football. And then we can go in and edit the text files for current home team and current away team. So if I just type in Ballarat, for example, Coach got confused when I had um, Kangaroo Flat playing Kangaroo Flat every week. <laughs> oh, really? Because <laughs> that was the default you gave me. Um, Did you not know how to change it? Oh, not for you the first few weeks, no. <laughs> now, now you know now, at least. Uh, yeah. um, so now that we've done that, we can open up Red Scores and it will have the correct names. Um, now, no, things like being able to change the name in the app itself are coming. Red Scores is being developed on. Um, this is just what we've got to work with at the moment. So what I like to do is just sort of drag it off to the side and we've got a few buttons in here. So the main ones we want to focus on are obviously the score buttons. Um, so, da -da 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 -da. so... Just yeah. press a few times and show them the changes in the... Buttons. Yeah, yeah. So um, sometimes you might get given um, your template and it's already got numbers in there. You just go through and, and change them. The current quarter button uh, flicks between all of our available quarters, so quarter one, quarter time, quarter two, so on and so forth. The start and pause button uh, doesn't work. Don't pause it, just reset it, because pausing it just doesn't work. Um, it then, as you can see here, it counts, out at, counts up at uh, double speed. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had that. Kirst has been trying to catch up because he missed the timer. And he's just and hit it a couple, of, hit times. It a couple of times. Yeah. And it worked for him, I guess. But um, yeah. <laughs> and see, like, like you can see here that it is working to pause and unpause, but sometimes it just won't, or you might accidentally double click it. Yeah, there should be an option to like um, write the time you want in the. Um, yes. In the yes, middle. there yeah. should be Pete. Yes. It's almost like that's already been done. Oh, is it? Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. yeah. Good yeah, no, it's it's done. <laughs> um, now there is one bug, unfortunately, with the timer currently, where it might just freeze uh, and just pause itself. So. Just keep an eye on it. If you find that it does stop on its own in the middle of a quarter, you can just hit play and it will continue as normal. If you find that it's stopping and it's confusing the viewers and you just want to leave it for the rest of the quarter, you don't have to reset it. It is being worked on, it is being fixed and hopefully shouldn't be an issue in the future. Yeah. But just something to be aware of. And if you hit, hit it twice in a row, like really quickly, it won't. So if you press away plus six, like a couple of times, it'll go straight to 12 on OBS. Yeah, yeah, you don't sort of see the different jumps no. on it. Yeah, I get you. Yes, yeah, so if you like, if you're doing a stream by yourself and you like miss a point or something, you can just go 1 6 or something when the next goal is scored. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. sometimes you don't have time to put the score on at the point breaks because they're not really breaks so like yeah you, you get you get half a second yeah that's one thing with the scoring is obviously it's good to do it um it's good to do the scoring as quickly as you can but there might be a time where a team's going to kick it behind and the play continues on literally half a second later yeah. don't don't stress yourself about getting the score straight away you can come back later and add it it's not it's not going to bother anyone if it's not there straight away so don't don't stress too much about that um, all right, so we're going to minimise um, red scores there. Stream keys? Yeah, sure. Cool. Yeah. So uh, what I will do is open up... Open up the Facebook live stream thing. 
Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Uh, I'm going to change over on that view. That's fine. So I can sign into Facebook without any issues. Oh, everyone hack into Caleb's Facebook account. We, we don't want that. No. There was a, um, I think they were doing the State of Origin or something, and like they showed the Wi Fi password on the, the, the screen, oh, like the no. whiteboard behind the commentators. <laughs> so, like, people on the ground were like <laughs> all, the all over it. That's yeah. awesome. And it was like specifically for the. Oh, so the, it would have been TV. like the fast Wi Fi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so, what I'm going to do is go over to. Um, there's not even an option for creating a live anymore. Or is that it there? That must be it there. So, this is our um, private uh, live stream hosting group. Um, if you do happen to join us for streaming, um, we will obviously invite you to this, so it's something that you can join in on whenever you want. What's up? It's about to die. Oh, um, that's yours. Yeah, I'll keep going. So, we're going to click on... So, if we want to uh, go live in this group, I was just trying to figure it out there, we can click on, you know, just adding a post and click add to your post. Oh, wrong button. Wrong button. <laughs> click on room, then go back, then click on add to your post. Now it's not there at all. Oh my God, it was just there. I hate Facebook so much. <laughs> it was, oh, oh my God. Twitch streams, yeah, because definitely not a convoluted. Oh, I shouldn't be this convoluted. See, it's there now, live video. So now we've gone uh, to this screen here, uh, and so what we can do is click up, set up, click on, set up live video, and that will load for a couple of seconds. So realistically, uh, in terms of testing, um, our only option that we're interested in is this one right here, stream key. So all we have to do is copy that and go back to OBS and click go into settings, stream. You can see we already have Facebook selected there. And then we can just paste that into that option there. We can also show that if necessary, if you would prefer to do so. We can hit apply and okay. And so now all I have to do is hit start streaming and we'll give that half a second to load. Now, if I put them side by side, which is, so this is how I would monitor my streams on the day, is I would have OBS on one side of the computer and Facebook on the other. Um, now, you can see in the bottom here is our bit rate. Ooh, uh, normally, it should be green. Green yeah. is good, as you can see here. Yellow and red is not good. Now, I'm assuming because we're streaming, because we've got one laptop out of view that's streaming. We've got this computer here that's trying to stream, which it's it's completely failing entirely. <laughs> um, it's just not. Well, it should oh. be on that Wi-Fi though. Because it's yeah okay. It's just so, not that great a signal here, I guess. Do a speed test. That's a good thing to. No, so I was. You know what? I think it might be the dongle itself. Yeah. I was having issues yesterday where it would connect and it would do a speed test. Switch to Barry. But I couldn't actually do anything. Yeah, okay, right. I don't know if Barry's there. So we're just going to quickly switch uh, 4G dongles. If you combine two 4G dongles, you get an 8G. Yeah, how many, how many radiations is that? Oh, yeah, have? sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you've had your fourth booster, though. <laughs> um, oh, thanks. <laughs> Better not start that. Someone will, someone will have a problem with that, no doubt. So we're going to stop streaming there, which I should have hit initially. Yeah. Um, switched back. Get, All right. Get. So we're back on the laptop there. So are we still connected to? All right. So we're going to connect from to two three three D six E. Excuse me. Sometimes you might have to time, turn the Wi-Fi off and on. 
There you go. 233 D6 key. So that's working. Let's try again. Start streaming. Ah. So, it's funny, this is actually a really good, um, really good troubleshooting exercise, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Because um, we're actually, so this is one of those things that does go wrong, is internet, and it does go wrong very regularly. Um, so if I switch back over here, you can see that uh, we are getting some form of connection. Uh, Facebook's not having a good time with it. But you can see it is trying to do something with it. So it's probably it's probably because we're indoors. Uh, I I would assume. So like I'm just gonna. One thing I do is you just you get your your antenna and you just start moving it around and figuring <laughs> out. What works best for it? Yeah. So like I've just I've just thrown it off to the side there by five meters, and all of a sudden it's working perfectly. Yeah. Like if I switch back to OBS there, uh, you see it's just it's it's in, it's out, it's in, it's out. So you can't really win. Um, so what we're going to do um, switch to the is switch to the work Wi-Fi which I didn't want to have to do because it sort of defeats the purpose, but that's fine. That's okay. That's okay. So we're taking this live stream outdoors. Uh. <laughs> that'll, that'll be next week's, next yes. week's live stream. We'll go yeah. outside. Yeah, yeah. Film from uh, Geelong Arrows ground, yeah. Oh, yeah. We could do that. We should do that. Next week, we should go to a ground and do one. Oh, that'd be like... Women planning or something like that. Um, yeah, it might work out. Probably all the more reason to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we can now see that that's working perfectly, and um, we're going to hit go live over here. Uh, but we don't need a title. Um, and so just like that, the stream is working. Um, and so this is this is how you can test it. So you can sit here and watch the stream on Facebook, and you know, we can go over to Red Scores and, you know, change the scores. It takes a second or two to pop up in OBS, and then, uh, you know, a, a, a few seconds later, it's going to pop up over on, uh, over on Facebook here. Yeah. Um, and as part of the streaming process, setting up Facebook is, again, one of those things that I do for you. So I would go through onto... I might go onto Ballarat's page or Bendigo's page or whatnot and set up the live stream for you. And I send you the stream key in an email. Um, and so all you have to do is go onto Facebook and go to the page and monitor it. There's no actual setup on Facebook's end that you need to do. Um, I've, is there any point sort of showing that stuff? Not really for this. That's fine then. Um, I think we'll stop streaming. That's fine. All right, well that's sort of the basic live streaming setup. Now what I'll do is quickly show you the OBS templates as well and how they work. Um, I have a feeling there's one already set up in the... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I figured I might, might remove it and redo it. Okay. So I can see. Um, let's just make sure I don't have any questions in my email, right? <laughs> I don't think anyone's bothered. No. I mean, that's, I didn't expect any anyway. All right, so what I'll quickly do is show you how to import um, a scene. There's actually a different Bendigo one here. So let's just assume that you've opened up OBS and it's Friday, after, uh, Friday afternoon. You've received my email with, with your folder and you want to get everything set up. So all I have to do is click on scene, uh, scene collection and import and then we'll click on the three dots here, which allows us to navigate and we'll navigate to the folder that we have, and you'll see here that it actually gives us this JSON file. Um, I'm not monitoring. 
I haven't had the laptop screen on that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it just staring at us? Yep, oh, it has yeah. that one. Yeah. Has been. All right, so now that you can actually see what we're working with here, <laughs> um, so let's just assume you've opened up OBS for the first time and um, you're not looking at anything. So we'll go to the scene collection menu at the top and then import. And we'll click on the three dots here to allow us to browse. And I've already opened up our folder here. And you can see that the only option it's giving us is our JSON file, which is exactly what we want. So we'll double click and we'll hit import. And you'll notice that nothing happened. And that's because we just need to go up to scene collection here and actually select what we just imported. And that will change it up. And there's not a single thing in this template apparently. Oh no, no, it was just loading, it's fine. Okay. Now, because I create the templates on my computer and your computer have files in different uh, places, you'll have to go and um, locate where the files are. So to do that, all we have to do is click on our new file uh, box here and then the three dots. And so take note of the file you opened. So it was counter.txt. So all we have to do is go into the red scores folder, data, football, and then counter.txt. Is this for Bendigo though? Is it a Bendigo? No, no, this is GV. Oh, GV. Um, and so you'll notice that not only has it, it, has it found our first file, it's, it's told us that it's found more files in the same location. So when we, when we could click uh, yes here, it'll import all the other text files for us. So we don't have to worry about the quarter or the scores or anything like that. The only other two ones we'll have to find is our scoreboard, which is just back a couple of folders here. And when we select our scoreboard, it finds the holding screen in there as well. And then we can hit apply. And just like that, all your graphics are ready to go. And all, all you have to do to set up your template is go plus video capture device, and then, of course, the webcam pops up again. We flick over to our Elgato. We hit OK. You notice that everything else has disappeared, um, and that's just because the sources screen here is actually like a, a vertical list of all the items. So the Elgato is actually over the top of everything. So we want to click and drag that down to the bottom, and just like that, we're good to go. Um, if you you know you're, you caught a break and you're ready to put up your holding screen, we can click over to the other scene with a nice transition, and we're all good to go. And so that's basically uh, the setup for live streaming with OBS. Um, all right, troubleshooting. Yes. So I guess the first the first thing to say um, with that is turn it off and on again. So. That's always number one troubleshooting is turn it off and on again. So if the camera, you know, once you plug the camera into the capture card and the capture card into the laptop, um, if you're not getting a connection, turn the camera off and on. Restart your laptop, check all the plugs, all the, you know, all, all the connections and all your plugs because those are generally going to be the first things to go. If you've got one HDMI cable and that's not working, try another one. Um, and it's just right, either end as well. yeah yeah exactly so if this HDMI here isn't working properly it's just a matter of flicking the connections over and you might find that that uh, that gets the job done sometimes it, it's just that simple and hopefully if, you know if everything works well I was able to unplug and replug that cable and there wasn't a single actual issue in terms of connection everything just sort of worked um, I think. One issue that we have with these Elgatos is they do have drivers that need to be installed. Now, we do install the drivers for you on the work laptops that we provide, um, but if you're using your own laptop or uh, whatnot, you will have to install your own drivers, and that's probably the, the hardest part of the whole process, I find, with the, the capture card and the streaming bit, is trying to get this capture card working. Um, and that's why... For example, you've got to look for your, uh, your flashing lights on, on the top of the capture card. If you're not getting your connection, but every time you plug these in, it's showing red, then you know that, that there's something wrong with the capture card specifically. So I guess the best example is to just do the wrong thing and show you what I can't. <laughs> Actually, you know what we can do? Just to just to sort of show. You. So 
I've got a different USB cable here. I'm plugging it into the wrong cable on the laptop. <laughs> you know what's funny? Does that actually work? Wait. I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna prove me wrong here because it actually just showed up the correct lights on it, Gosh. even with the incorrect cable. Now I even made the point earlier about saying that I've never had these work with a different cable, right? Yeah. No. Nah. No. It's, it's like it's like working, but it's not. Yeah, it's giving us audio, but not visual. Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, I, I, I guess that's a really good example of issues you might have, right? So you've gone and used a particular USB cable that is incorrect. And so you can see here that, um, you know, when you do plug your capture card in, we can see... Oh, I might yeah, have, I might have the camera. Yeah. So I'll do it again so you can see it. So from all intents and purposes like that that looks correct but as we can see on the other end on the laptop here um, that obviously isn't the case um, and so that's why obviously you need to be using um, the correct USB cable there. Alright so we're going to unplug that. Redo that. Um, so I find another thing as well is you might you might open up OBS on the laptop and then plug the capture card into the, the laptop. That can cause issues as well. So I find that plugging everything into the laptop before you get started with OBS is probably the best way to go. Um, otherwise, the computer just struggles to pick things up. If you do, you know, if you open, if you plug everything in, set it all up, and then turn open up OBS and the capture card just isn't coming up, that's where you would you'd restart OBS or restart the laptop entirely. And that, I guess, stresses the importance of turning up to your game an hour before, an hour and a half before, so you've got that time to do a laptop reset if necessary. Definitely. And there's so many other little steps that you'll forget about. Um, like I'm, just, I'm just trying to think of other things that can go wrong, and I'm sort of I'm coming up blank a little bit. <laughs> what can you think of? Um, do you want to just show them the speed test as well? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, good call. Yeah. So one thing that you can do to sort of gauge at, at a ground whether you're going to be able to stream successfully is to do an internet speed test. So you can just go to Google and just type in speed test. Um, I usually use the Ookla uh, website. They seem to generally be the most consistent. Um, and then we can click on go just to do a test. Now uploads don't matter too much. It's your, uh, it's your upload that you're, you're mostly concerned on. So you can see here our downloads are, are nice. Um, it's sitting around 90 megabits a second. So we'll see what our uploads give us. But you're generally aiming for a minimum of 3 or 4 megabits a second. So you can see here that obviously we're, we're well, well over that. So there's no concern here. Um, but when you're at a ground and you're using your 4G dongle, uh, this may not provide 100% perfect internet all the time, and that's where having um, an antenna, for example, having, having a piece of equipment that you can put up anywhere and play around with to get a better signal is, is really helpful in, in these situations, and that's why we do provide it, because we found that these alone just weren't enough. Um, and even like at my ground on the weekend, for example, I could not get any internet at all, even with this and the antenna. Um, so I hotspotted my phone and it worked perfectly fine. There wasn't a single problem. So sometimes some of those things just happen. Um, now one thing I actually will show quickly is changing the quality of the stream, midstream. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we'll go back to our laptop there. So I probably should have mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, there are a couple of other settings that we can take a look at within OBS. Um, that do affect the work that we're doing. The main one that we want to look at, though, is under the output menu, and then video bitrate. So this is what determines the quality of the video we're actually sending out to 
to Facebook or YouTube or whoever. So there's no sort of hard and fast number here. I'll generally aim for between three and 5,000. Um, so you can see here it's set to 4,000. I think that's perfectly fine just to leave how it is. Um, we're gonna change, I'll oh, we'll leave that on hardware. So 4,000 is perfectly fine, but you might say you're, you're at your ground, you hit start streaming, um, and this one's not gonna work now, of course. You might hit start streaming, and then it'll just be red, just non-stop red. So if you find that, that, happen, that that's happening, that you are getting a streaming connection and there's a bit rate shown, but it's just red and that Facebook's complaining, you might wanna hit stop streaming. So if you are, if you are streaming and you find the quality um, isn't just getting through there, you can stop, hit start streaming or stop streaming so it's not streaming anymore. And then go, just, go, just go into settings, output, and you might change this to say, you know, I might test 3,000 or, uh, 3,500 is actually a good test. You might go down by 500 uh, kilobit blocks each time just to see what works a bit better. And then hit start streaming and you might find that that one provides a bit, uh, a bit more stability for you. Um, anything to add? No, I don't think so. Um, do, I think do we usually just film 1080p? Yeah, yeah. I, I normally... See, it's hard because um, the JVC cameras can output 1080-60. These can output 720-60 or 1080-30. Yeah. But you've got to go through and set you know, OBS to, to 720-60 and this to 720-60. So I just prefer to do it at... 1080-30 because it's yeah. less confusing. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's a good point to make is that generally we just live stream at 1080p 30 frames per second. Um, and what I can do is go back to OBS and go into settings. And you'll see here is our video option. So base resolution is what we're currently working at and the output resolution is what Facebook is seeing. And then you can also see common S FPS values actually let us go in there and change the mm. FPS that we're broadcasting at. You should always just leave, like, realistically going between 1080p and 720p doesn't really matter either way, a big deal. Um, I'd be leaving FPS at 30 unless there's a very specific reason why you'd need to be using 60 FPS, like an example where we're doing five camera live streams with 60 FPS cameras. Yes. But in a normal stream, 1080, 30 is basically uh, all you need. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. And I think this stresses the importance of writing a list and being a bit more organised next week. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, cool. Um, so I, I appreciate the two people that have been sitting there this entire time. Um, we've had two viewers the whole time. Nice. And there's Great. been a couple of other people that have popped in um, here and there. Wish they could comment. Um. Yeah, so <laughs> you'll be able to comment next week I want to have a lav mic so we're not talking into a microphone sticking out of the table. Um, I want to have picture in picture as well so yeah. we can talk and the, you know they can see us and stuff at the same time. So I think that'll be the that'll be the go for next weekend. How does that sound? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. All right, appreciate you guys for uh, popping in, um, and I reckon we'll be back at two p.m. next weekend for uh, some more Red Onion live stream training. Thank you very much.